everybody and welcome to Eminem Minecraft World. Uh, every so often I like to talk about a little bit of films or do a little review. It's so we've done a few times, but today let's talk Transformers the Last Night. Michael Bay's last instalment of the Transformers number five. And obviously Mark Wahlberg, uh, I believe it's gonna be his last one as well. So when this series continues, and it does sound like it's going to. Now, I only say that not because I'm going to give any of the film away, but because the promotion is still pushing it and they're still saying there's a lot of scripts out there. So we'll have to wait and see whether someone wants to take it over. But let's talk the last night then. Is it any good? Is all that's been read about it true? Well, let's say I am a Transformers fan. I've enjoyed Transformers since they first bought the first toys out. So Generation 1, I had the original Optimus Primes and Megatrons and Soundwaves and all the rest of them. Though, one thing I will say about this film, maybe they tried too hard. It is, it is good if you're a Transformers film. Um, so let's cover some of the things. The robots themselves. We know some of them, uh, obviously, but I think there is a lot that's not explained very well, to be honest, which is something a lot of critics do say, and to be honest, it is true. Uh, the action is all good. We know what to expect from Marco Bay now. You know, the explosions, the car chases, the battles between the robots themselves. Uh, yeah, I, Hot Rods there, we all know that now. Um, but a bit disappointed there. I'm not going to say no more on that. I think he could have done more. One thing I found with all, within all these Transformers films, especially this one, and I think it would make a big difference. Don't know why. Apart from going back to the original cartoon version of the movie, it lacks a decent soundtrack. Now, I, I don't know about everybody else, but I do feel that these would have been better going back to an 80s, 90s soundtrack. It just sort of lacks that touch. But anyway, that's my own personal opinion. So the story, we all know it starts with King Arthur and Merlin and history of Transformers. You kind of feel you've been there, done it before though. There are shots and bits and pieces uh, locations from previous Transformers films to bring it all together um, again being the last one now the story is it muddled is it muddly is it here and everywhere like this red some of it you can see the whole point of it uh, maybe it's because it's quite a long film about two and a half hours uh, I think Mark Wahlberg he's pretty much <laughs> pretty much all of it there's not many scenes where he's not really in you know, he's either running around or looking a bit, um, as we say, like, not lost, that's the right word, but facial expressions of uh, absorbing everything. And obviously we do have the British characters now, Eddie Hopkins, and he's uh, the love interest of Mark Wahlberg. Well, should we say the female lead? You know, they all do do a quite good job. We, we have got a young girl in there as well. She... I think whether that's to bring in a young audience, but I have to say it's very difficult to do that in this one. It's, the comedy in it is a few swear words here and there, which I think again limits to who can watch this a little bit because there are certain scenes you're kind of thinking it's funny but was it needed? So the comedy really is the best bit is about the butler robot. He is funny, but again there were bits that said in there, you're kind of thinking, if that wasn't in there, you could have made perhaps the film a PG. Or, um, you know, not the same influence, but I'm not going to focus on that, because there are some bits that make it funny as well. Optus, we all know, goes bad, rogue, call it what you want. Um, he's not in it a great deal. To be honest, the start and the ending. Uh, I think that's predicted, really. But you kind of want that, you're waiting for that bit where someone kicks in. We all know Bumblebee. There's no one of the lead ones in it. 
um, as for Megatron I think there's a lot not explained there um, we, the last film we had Galvatron all of a sudden it's Megatron um, and I think the other thing that they don't do so much in this one is I know, as I said I've used Transformers since season one of the originals is you're kind of thinking that is there some of the main ones that they could have still used? You know, they're bringing in lots and lots and lots of robots in the background. And I think sometimes they overdo that rather than focus on just a few and making them stand out. You know, yeah, you got the little cute robots in there, you got the butler robot in there, as well as the main ones. Uh, you got the inventor, you know, you got Grimlocks in it a few times. And you got other little ones. I'm not going to say them all. I think the baddies, I think they do lax this time. Uh, mainly part of Megatron, you kind of think, when they say their names, yeah, you got Barricade in there. You're kind of thinking, who? Oh, is that just me? Maybe it's just me. Maybe I've forgotten some of them. But you're kind of thinking it does lack still that Scar Scream or Shockwave that somebody else, another baddie, with Megatron. I did enjoy it, don't get me wrong, I can see we can, I'm just trying to cover all the critic things. I did enjoy it, uh, I'm going to go back and see the 3D version, I like to see a film two, three times when it's like this, because I often find that sometimes you miss bits, it's a bit like uh, The Revenge of the Fallen. Uh, although a lot of people, the critics mostly say they didn't enjoy it, but actually the story of Revenge of the Fallen actually does cover a true story real life story so if you really knew that you'd actually think the story is actually quite clever so there's normally something hidden in them and I think you know I think if you just watch it once you're trying to take it all in and there is a lot that's not explained and there is a lot that just kind of thinking well if that happened that would be it anyway um, no, it's getting I don't get too much, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll give those thoughts separately if people want to chat about it. Yeah, I did enjoy it. Uh, I think it could have been better, definitely. I'm not going to sit here and moan completely about it. Obviously, we know what to expect. I think that's one of the issues now within the Transformer films. We know what to expect. We know Michael Bayer, we know the comedy scenes. We know um, what, what's going to happen. Now I did enjoy, uh, I think they tried to change it within the UK setting, uh, rather than uh, like Chicago or something like that, which is quite good. Uh, I think all the actors and actresses, I think they, they would have spent a lot of time uh, within doing the stunts, let's say that. Um, but is it worth watching? If you're a Transformers fan, yes you're going to watch it and you go enjoy it. Is it the best one? Unfortunately not. I hope they had saved the best to last, but I don't think it is. Um, well, to me, I think uh, probably I'd say Dark of the Moon is probably my favourite. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's. I don't want to try and do this without giving it away. It's early days for it. Obviously, there will be a lot of people go to see it. Sit back, relax, enjoy it. Don't overthink it. If you're there just to can it, you're going to can it. If you're there going to sit back to take it what it is, you might well just enjoy it. But it is a Transformers film, it is Marco Bay. There's going to be robots everywhere, there's going to be explosions everywhere. The storyline's going to be... That's what it is. It's a Transformers. So please enjoy it. To, I think, say whoever's going to take this over, They've been left with something that could be um, very interesting. And they always said they wanted to leave this with lots of open doors. You know, the rumours of Bumblebee as a separate movie as well. Um, you know, I've even read there's going to be another, another one in two years' time, but if nobody's actually directing it yet, two years is a bit lucky. So hopefully they will continue it. Um, but that's yeah it, it is enjoyable but at the same time unfortunately there are quite a few things right with what they say but that's only because sometimes you also the critics and like that, they're looking for the faults rather than 
what it actually is. Well, I am Maximus from the MNM Minecraft world. Thank you for watching this. If I was to give it stars, it's difficult <laughs> because I do like the Transformers, but it could have finished with more of a whiz. So I'm not going to give it like stars. You are looking at, I don't know, probably two and a half, three stars. I say that because it did lack real um, drawn to it, like there was something that special on there. You know, the King Arthur is great. I probably enjoyed them, you know. It, it certainly showed the uh, co Richie's King Arthur. Well, that should have been, that's better. You know, that that would have been a lot better film if it was like that, but let's not say that. So, obviously, Merlin, the bit with Merlin, um, I can see what they do, but I think, again, part of it wasn't necessary. Again, uh, I don't know. But, yeah, it, it is enjoyable. It is long. You are going to think, well, that was wrong, or this is wrong, or they could have done this, or they could have done that. Um, Optimus is used pretty much the same way. So it would have been good to say slight gym. Yes, we all know it goes bad for a bit, in it? But, yeah, so let us know your thoughts. Thank you. See you later.